I had a question recently about the compatibility of test tapes for 8-track and 4-track Porter Studios. At the moment I've got this Tascam 488. What you're seeing just now is the front surface of the 488. It's propped up at about 45 degrees with a bit of cardboard uh, so I can access the board for calibration and some other tests that I'm doing that will be subject of another video. If I reach behind here with a cassette, I can insert cassette and still press play. So what I'm going to show you is what happens on the readout here when I insert both this TIAC test tape. It's a one kilohertz test tape. It's designed for calibration of playback amplifiers on a four track machine. And I've also got this pre-recorded tape. It happens to be Leonard Cohen. It's an old uh, cassette my mum bought back in the 80s. So first I'll put in the Leonard Cohen tape. When I press play, pretty much I'm not getting anything from track four. And some of these are very much quieter than others. Of course, the music that's recorded on the tape will vary in level, so that is a factor. By contrast, this tape, all four segments have got a one kilohertz sine wave on them. The amplitude, that is the volume of each of those sine waves should be pretty even. So I put that in and it seems like all eight segments of the record playback head of the 488 are responding to that tape. Certainly the levels are much steadier. So we might think, well, we can just go into the record playback board, find the appropriate trim pots and start adjusting levels using this tape. Um, but can we really trust what these meters are telling us? Um, what I want to do is go over to Photoshop now and we'll have a look at an annotated diagram I've got that shows which regions of the tape are used by 8-track and 4-track heads and Tascam units and how much those overlap, what the compatibility is between those. Sorry, another kind of tape that we should probably play through this. And that is a recording that was made on a 4-track. So here's a cassette that's got a recording that I just finished on a Tascam 244. So let me put that in. Deals and bread mm. Washed away like marks in the sand I was just turning down the pitch control there because I was sounding like someone was crushing my testicles. Um, uh, clearly the pitch control in this needs calibration. Um, but you can see that I've got tracks one and two up to, in order to get tracks one and two from the four track tape. Calibration hasn't been done on this yet. Perhaps they're just not sensitive enough. They're not showing up there, but they are present. Whereas tracks three and four from the four track are ending up on seven and eight, and they are showing up on the meters as well. Pretty much tracks three, four, five, six, the middle four on this meter are getting nothing. So when we go over to that diagram, we'll see why that is. This diagram appears in the 488 and 488 Mark II service manual. I've enlarged it. I've made it a little bit grayer and put it in the background. I've added the numbers of the tracks and I've added some color coding just to make it a little bit easier to interpret. So this strip from left to right represents the tape and here on the left, I'm trying to circle, you probably can't see my cursor very well, but the left most of these segments, we've got tracks one, two, three, four. So we can see that the head isn't recording on the full width of the tape. It's using maybe about a quarter of the tape. It's got these empty regions between the gaps on the record playback head. And I assume that's to prevent bleed between tracks when you're multi-tracking. And it's a scale drawing. Over here on the right, we've got the Tascam 8-track one. And so we can see that the tracks are that much narrower. The gaps between them are a little bit narrower. Then over here on the right is the IEC Philips 4-track four 4-channel four tape. So this is what you have in a commercial cassette player. Probably the easiest way to think about how this Philips head works is that while your Tascam 4-track four 4-channel four four head, the one on the left of the screen, 
If you imagine that head has four windows and each of those windows corresponds to each of these track regions and the electromagnetic field from the corresponding coil and magnet is then uh, imprinting the tape with information. You've got four windows there, um, but on the IEC Phillips head, you've only got two windows on the lower half. So although the tape has four regions of information printed on it, the head is only capable of reading or writing two of them at the time. If you were looking at the head, you would see that there were two of these little sort of oblongs on the surface of the head rather than four. And in order to access the other two tracks of information, which is printed backwards, then you would flip the tape over. Now I've got some extra layers here that uh, show you a little bit more visually which tracks of the eight track recording are going to play back properly on a four track cassette player. So these beams that show you the way that track eight on the eight track head corresponds pretty strongly with track four on the Tascam. Track seven corresponds pretty strongly with track three. Uh, track two is compatible with track two on a four track. Track one of an eight track is compatible with track one of the four track. By the way, uh, the head in the 688 the 488 Mark II and the 488 Mark One is the same part, it's the same part number. I've seen people say in forums and so on that the 688 is a superior machine because it's got a superior head. Um, I think they're just talking shit. Um, it's the same head and there's nothing special about the head anyway. It's like a little coil around a little ferrite magnet in a case. You know, there's not some special magic in there that makes sound quality happen. Anyway. If I take away that layer and make this one visible, we can see that track four kind of misses, right? It's not hitting any of the regions. Track three kind of misses. Track six and track five, those recordings end up in the dead zones of the four track head. So the way that tracks three, four, five, six miss three, four of the four track head, but that tracks 1, 2, 7 and 8 correspond to tracks 1, 2, 3 and 4 of the 4-track head respectively. That explains why we were getting my 4-track recording to play back on channels 1, 2, 7 and 8 of the 488 and we were getting nothing in the 4-tracks in the middle. So what about the result we were getting when I was playing the commercial tape, the Leonard Cohen tape in the 488 and I was getting a variety of levels except the track 3 wasn't playing back at all. Well, if you look at the way I've highlighted this now, I've put in these colored blocks to show which tracks from an IEC Phillips head are gonna hit which apertures on a Tascam 8-track head. And you can see that the left-hand side of the forward recording is going to just hit track five, but hit track one of the eight track head really strongly. So we might pick up a lower signal in track five and a higher one in track one. The right hand side of the stereo signal from the Phillips head or intended for a Phillips head is going to just about skiff segment six of the eight track head, but it's going to hit number two, segment number two really strongly. The right hand side of the backwards region is going to hit segment eight and the left hand side of the backwards region is going to hit segment 8 of the 8 track head really strongly but um, it's only going to slightly overlap with region number 4 but track 3 exists in this sort of uh, no man's land between these right hand stereo channels so that's why we were getting no signal from the Leonard Cohen tape appearing in the meter of the 488 so that just leaves the question of why all 8 meters of the 488's head seem to respond to the TIAC calibration tape. If it was recorded with a Phillips head, then uh, it shouldn't be receiving anything on segment 3, track 3. If it was recorded on a Tascam 4 track head, then really we shouldn't be seeing anything on tracks 3, 4, 5 or 6. So I think what it must be is that tapes like that are produced with a special kind of record head which have wider regions than any of these shown. It might, in fact, be that because it's just a sine wave, um, that it's just one big aperture, so the entire width of the tape is printed with the one kilohertz signal.
That is just a theory. I don't have any way to prove it, um, but it would certainly make sense in terms of TIAC only needing to supply one kind of tape for all cassette calibrations. You know, you buy that cassette and then you can calibrate your 8-track and your 4-track units using it. Don't take that as gospel, but I think it means that if you can get hold of one of those TIAC calibration tapes, then you're good to use it with 688s, 488s, and Yamaha, even if the head layer is different, I think the regions are wide enough that it will work with calibration of pretty much any machine. They're not cheap, like that one cost me like 80 quid or something, like 80 pounds, that's what, uh, like 120 dollars, just for a lousy cassette. I suppose it just depends how much of this you're going to be doing. I've calibrated mm, well, at least 100, maybe more like 200, maybe more than 200 Porter Studios using that tape, so I suppose it's worth it for me. Anyway, I hope that you found that useful. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you again soon.